In Alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah Ta'ala, Nahmaduhu, Nasta'inuhu, Nasta'gfiru. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we ask for His forgiveness. When I would be lahim in Shururi and Fusina, women say ye ati amalina, and we take refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequences of the decisions and choices that we make. May Yahdihi lahum fala mudilla la whomever Allah guides, no one and nothing can lead that person astray. Women yudlil fala hadi Allah, and whomever He leads astray, whomever He leads astray because of the choices that person has made. Because of a person turning away from guidance, when guidance has been made clear to him. Because of a person turning to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he needs. Because of a person's oppression of other people. If Allah leads a person astray because of what that person chose for himself, then let him know that no one else and nothing else will give him guidance after Allah ta'ala. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ And I testify that nothing in any way, shape or form deserves our worship, our absolute love and submission, our loyalty, our humility, except Allah alone and with our partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. Brothers and sisters in Islam, it is important for us to always keep in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship him. That Allah created us, he put us here on this earth for a purpose. And so a part of our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to always check and to make sure that we are fulfilling that purpose. He placed everything in this earth for us. He is the one who created everything in this earth for you. He created what's in the earth for us and he created us for him. So it's important that we not allow ourselves to be distracted by what was created for us and us not to give attention to what we were created for. Allah says in Surah Al-Thariyat, chapter number 51, verse 56, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have not created the jinn and the men except to worship me. And so this life is temporary. And we have to keep that in mind. That we are on our way to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we want to make sure that we are busying ourselves with those things that will make us happy when we meet him. Because the reality is, is that if we waste our lives in what is temporary and we forget forever, then we have not spent our lives in the right way. It's like a person who spends a week or two at a hotel and he spends all of his money because it's nice. It's nice not having to work. It's nice relaxing being in a hotel. But after you stay at the hotel, you got to go home. And if you spend all your money at the hotel and you don't have any money to pay your rent, and you have any money to pay for your heat bill, your gas bill, your water bill, your light bill, then no matter how wonderful a time you had in the hotel, the rest of your life is going to be miserable and sad. So let us not waste, let us not waste all of our money, all of our lives here in this hotel. The service is bad, got roaches and rats and leaks and all other things. It's not even a nice hotel, huh? We gotta be here, so don't waste our money in this. And let us save up for the hereafter. Brothers and sisters in Islam, an important part of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we often neglect is putting our trust in Allah. An important part of worshiping Allah is not just the prayers, the fasting, the charity, those things are important. But another part of worship that sometimes, oftentimes we neglect is that our heart be attached to Allah and relying on Allah and nothing else. We recite in Surah Al-Fatiha, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نستعين. You alone do we worship and on you alone do we depend. So it's just as important that we make sure that our hearts are depending on Allah as it is to make sure that our bodies are in the masjid and that our hands are giving charity and that we're being dutiful to our parents. It's important for us to give attention to 
what do we rely on and what do we depend on? Because depending on Allah and relying on Allah is one of those acts of worship that you really don't know if you're doing it right until a problem happens. We really don't see how much we depend on Allah until things don't go the way we want them to go or the way that we planned. And so depending on Allah is worship. And we have to make sure that we give attention to this because we live in a society that promotes that science and understanding science and that progress and health and wealth all lies in the hands and the efforts of the human being. That you, weak man, who can't even wake himself up in the morning, whose alarm clock can go on and on and on and he can't hear it, he can't wake up until Allah puts his soul back in his body. You human being who cannot protect yourself from COVID-19 and a host of other diseases. You human being who does not know when you're going to die, what gender your children are going to be, what your life is going to be like a year from now. You have the power within you to control your destiny. This is the foolishness that is fed to our hearts and to our minds. And we cannot let ourselves be deceived by this and forget what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran and what the Prophet showed us and taught us and exemplified in his own life, which is that we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we depend on Allah. One of the places that we see this is in the area of health. One of the places that we see this, and yani where our dependency is. Do we depend on Allah or do we depend on the creation? Is in the area of health. People in American society, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the luxury, and it's important to note that it's a luxury, a luxury of choice. Most people in other parts of the world don't have as much access to things as we have. And so we begin to think that this is normal. It's not normal. It's a luxury. It's a luxury to have choices to all types of fruits and all types of breads and all types of foods anytime you want it, wherever you want it. And so we become very, very picky. And we begin to believe that food itself is going to make us live longer. Or going to the doctor is going to make us live longer. Or going to the gym is going to make us live longer. And this is not a knock on eating well or going to the gym or going to the doctor. Allah has blessed us with life and it's important for us to show gratitude to take care of what Allah has given us. But sometimes, we can go extreme where we feel like if I don't eat these certain foods, then my life is going to be cut short. And if I don't go to the doctor, my lifespan is going to be shorter than if I went to the doctor. And if someone passes away, a Muslim, because he, he wasn't going to the doctor regularly, nah, it's because Allah decreed he was going to die at that time. And what happens is, because we depend on these things, we do them religiously. That's the term, huh? We do it religiously. What does that mean? Religiously all the time. I only eat organic food. I always go to the gym in the morning, in the evening. I always go to my doctor's appointment every six months, every year, annually. I never miss them. But how many prayers does a person miss? How much zakat does he miss? How much dutifulness to his parents does he miss? He's not going to miss any meals, any gym appointments, visits, any doctor visits. Why? Because he believes that his life is in the hands of those things. He believes that kale and spinach and quinoa control his life. 
but on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's very particular about what he puts in his mouth, but not particular about what he puts in his heart. Doesn't matter, matter what TV shows he watches, movies he watches, YouTube videos he watches, music he listens to. He's not concerned about his heart because he doesn't feel that Allah is in control of his life. But he's concerned about what goes in his stomach even though it's coming out the other end. What goes in his heart is going to stay there and it's going to affect the rest of his body. The Prophet said that. In the hadith of Ibn Umar ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu, collected in Bukhari and Muslim, hadith number six of the 40 hadith of Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah, he mentions that the Prophet وسلم, said, in In the body is a small morsel of flesh. إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسْرُ كُلُّ Allahu Akbar. If this tiny morsel of flesh, if it's healthy, the rest of the body is going to be healthy. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسْرُ كُلُّ And if it's corrupt, the rest of the body is going to be corrupt. Allah وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ It's the heart, not the stomach. Not the stomach. It's the heart. We're concerned about what goes in our stomachs, but we're not concerned about what goes in our hearts. And we don't recognize that there are diseases of the heart like there are diseases of the body. When Allah describes the munafiqoon, what does he say? Fi qulubihim marad. Fi qulubihim marad. They have an illness in their hearts. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا And so Allah increased them in illness because of what they did. Why are we only concerned about the illness of the body and we're not concerned about the illness of the heart? A person goes to the gym day in, day out, won't miss it. But he's not concerned about all of the naked behinds that he's looking at in the gym. He's not concerned with the music playing in the gym. He's not concerned with what's on the screen in the gym. What goes in his heart doesn't matter. Because exercise, daily exercise is going to give me a long life. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us in hadith number 4 of the 40 hadith collected in Bukhari and Muslim as well. The hadith of Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu that when a person is in the womb of his mother, before he comes out into the world, the angel blows the soul into his body and is commanded to write down four things his sustenance and how long he's going to live are from those things that the angel writes down how long he's going to live it's already been determined our actions by themselves do not extend anything what we do, we try our best to take care of what Allah has given us out of appreciation to what Allah has given us. And these are means. These are means of being healthy. But our life and death lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person has a doctor. A man has a doctor that's a woman. He takes off his clothes and puts on a robe and he's naked in there alone in a room with a woman. And he doesn't have to be. And a woman has a doctor that's a man. And she disrobes and she puts on one piece of cloth, all her clothes off, alone in the room with a woman, with another man, excuse me. It doesn't have to be. And why do we put ourselves through these things? Because we believe that our life depends on it. وَإِنَ الدَّارُ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ the hereafter is the real life, if only they knew. We make concessions in our deen for a life that's going to end. We make concessions in our deen for a life that's going to end. And as for forever, we don't care for about forever. As for standing in front of Allah, we don't care about standing in front of Allah. Allah says in Surah Al-Hazab, and it's a beautiful ayat, and if a person thinks about it and reflects on it, it helps to put a person's life in real perspective. Allah says to those who run away from the battlefield in jihad, the munafiqeen, He says, He says, 
وَإِذَنْ لَا تُمَتَّعُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا He says, it's not going to help you. It's not going to benefit you if you run away from the battlefield. If you're afraid of dying or being killed. And even if you'd escape death on the battlefield, you're only going to live for a little while longer. You know, a person who is worried about cancer, if he gets cancer and survives cancer, is he going to live forever after that? Nope. If a person gets heart disease and he survives heart disease, is he going to live forever? Nope. There's no calamity that we are afflicted with in our bodies. Except that if we get over it or we don't get over it, we still got to die. So what are we preparing for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with? قُلْ مَنْ ذَلَّذِي يَعْصِمُكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ سُوءًا أَوْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ رَحْمَةً وَلَا يَجِدُونَ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرًا Say, who can prevent, who can protect you from Allah if he wants evil for you or if he wants mercy for you? And they will find no help or protector for them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the sunnah of our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he visited his son, Ismail, when he visited his son Ismail in Mecca, Ismail was away. And so he found his wife there. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, hadith number 3364. 3364. He was visiting his son Ismail in Mecca, and his son was away. And so he found his wife there, and he was asking her about her situation. MashaAllah, Allah blessed. Ismail's second wife, to be an appreciative wife. And even though things were tight and difficult and challenging, she saw that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed her and her husband because they had a home, because they had food, because they had well-being, they had afia. And so when Ibrahim alayhi salam asked her about her food, she said, Allahum wal ma." She said, we eat, we eat meat and we drink water. That's our meal. No vegetables, no kale, no spinach, no rice, no whole grains. We eat meat and we drink water. And what did Ibrahim alayhi salam say? Allahumma barik lahum fi lahmihim wa fi ma'ihim. He said, oh Allah, bless their meat and bless their water. No, everyone doesn't have the money to spend on that kind of diet. The kind of diets that people like to have that are luxuries. Most people don't have that kind of money. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Oh Allah, bless their meat and bless their water. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentioned no one else besides those who live in Mecca can live on a complete meat water diet without getting sick. Allahu Akbar. Look at that. The dua, the dependency on Allah changed Meal, a meal that would harm the body and made it a what? A blessing. Oh Allah, bless their meat and bless their water. Anyone else outside of Mecca can't live on a meat water diet unless they, oh, they, oh, they would get sick. But in Mecca, a person can live on what? On meat and water. Why? Because of the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And our own Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in the sixth year of his hijrah, he was in Khaybar. And the Jews invited him to a meal, a meal of poisoned meat. And he ate some of it. And then the meat, by Allah's permission, informed him that it was poisoned. And so the Prophet ﷺ stopped eating it. But that poison had entered his body. And Anas ibn Malik, عنه, he mentions that Allah held that poison in the body of the Prophet وسلم, until his message has been, had been conveyed. And then when it was decreed for the Prophet وسلم, to die, Allah let the poison go. And the poison took over the body of the Prophet وسلم, and he died from that poison. The point is what? Allah is in control, nobody else. The food's not in control, the gym's not in control, the meat's not in control, the doctor's not in control. Allah is in control. 
And if he blesses what he gives us, we're blessed. If some harm enters our body and Allah protects us from it, then we are protected. And so Muslims, we say 17 times a day when we pray in our prayers, You alone, Allah, do we worship. And on you alone, alone, Allah, do we depend. Let us live up to these words. Let it not just be words, statements on the tongue. Let us live. Let us live by إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليم كثيرا. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we've talked about the idea that our lives are not in the hands of anything created. Allah is more merciful to us and kinder to us than to leave us to the care of His creation. Allah subhanahu wa taala is the wali of those who believe. He is the protector and the caretaker and the guardian of the believer. He takes care of his soul, he takes care of his body, takes care of his children, takes care of his wealth for those who are willing to put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for those who would like to have a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who would like to get better at putting their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِأَثْقَارِ الصَّبَاحِ وَالْمَسَاء Then I encourage you to say the athkar of the morning and the evening. That before you go out into the world and start your day, begin by remembering Allah and remembering that you are a slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that your life and my life is in his control. These athkar, they remind us of what's important and they remind us that we are slaves of Allah. They remind us that we need forgiveness and they remind us that Allah is in control. If a person reads these athkar and he says them understanding what they mean with conviction, believing them to be the truth, then his life will change. His day will change because he knows he's a slave to Allah and that nothing in this world, no human being, no created thing can affect him outside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. And from those hadith, from those athkar of the morning and the evening is the dhikr that Abu Bakr where the Allah who used to say in the morning and the evening. His son, Abdurrahman, Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr, he said, Father, I hear you every morning, three times, and every evening, three times. I hear you making this certain dua. He said, yes, my son. He said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ make this dua three times, in the morning and the evening. وَأُحِبُّ أَنْ أَسْتَنَّ بِسُنَّتِي Allahu Akbar. He said, I love to follow the Prophet ﷺ sunnah. He said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ make this dua in the morning and the evening three times. And I love to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He used to say, Allahumma afini fi bedini. Oh Allah, protect me in my body. And he keep my body healthy and sound. Allahumma afini fi sami'i. Oh Allah, protect my hearing. Allahumma afini fi basri. O Allah, protect me in my sight. La ilaha illa ant. Nothing deserves to be worshipped beside you. Protect my body. And when we say protect my body, not just from sickness, protect it from sin. Allahu Akbar. Because this body is only going to be tormented in hell because of the sins that we commit. O Allah, protect my body any from falling into sin. And also from disease and harm. Protect my hearing from not paying attention to the Quran and to listening to foolishness and believing it. And protect my eyes from seeing haram because the eyes and the ears are the pathway to the heart. Protect me from seeing haram and seeing sins, those things that will affect me. And keep my vision. Keep the blessing of vision with me and the blessing of hearing with me. La ilaha illa ant. No one controls anything. No one. No one deserves to be worshipped beside you. No one controls anything beside you. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika 
min al kufri wal faqr. O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from disbelief and from poverty. Save me from kufr and save me from poverty. Some of the scholars mention because they come together oftentimes. Yani a person, a person falls into haram and falls into sin and sometimes leaves Islam because of his what? Financial situation. Allahu Akbar. He leaves prayer. A person leaves prayer altogether as a kafir. A person doesn't pray at all as a kafir. A person leaves prayer. Why? Because I got to get to work. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I seek refuge with you from kufr and faqr. وَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ And I seek refuge with you from punishment in the grave. لَا إِلَهِ لَا أَنْتِ None deserves to be worshipped besides you. And then at the end of the hadith, the hadith is hadith number 5090 in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood. 5090 in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood. Then he says, وَدَعَوَاتِ الْمَكْرُوبِ And the dua for the person in distress. And he, this what we just mentioned is the dua to say every morning and every evening. But if you ever find yourself in a really, really, really bad situation, then what do you say? Allahumma rahmataka arju. Oh Allah, it's your mercy that I hope for. La takilni ila nafsi tarfata'in. Don't leave me to myself for a moment. Oh Allah, when a person's in a difficult situation, oh Allah, it's your mercy that I'm hoping for. Don't leave me to myself for a moment. I can't fix it. Aslihli shatni kulla. Fix all of the things that are going wrong for me in my life. La ilaha illa ant. There's none that deserves to be worshipped besides you. What I want us to notice is in each of these du'a, where we are showing our dependency on Allah, in that du'a is what? La ilaha illallah. Because our worship of Allah is tied to how much we depend on Him. رَبَّنَا أَتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Oh Allah, help us to depend on you as we should. Oh Allah, help our reliance to be upon you alone. Oh Allah, we have to live. We have to live here in this dunya. We have to provide here for our families. We have to try to teach them and help them and eat and protect ourselves. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are in control of what happens here. Help us to depend upon you and not to depend upon anyone else besides you. Allahumma aslih lana deenana alladhi huwa ismatu amrina. Oh Allah, rectify for us our deen because it's what protects, it's what protects us. Wa aslih lana dunyaya. Dunyana alati fiha ma'ashuna and rectify for us our dunya because it's where we have to live. Wa aslih lana akhiratana alati fiha or fiha ma'aduna and rectify our hereafter because it's where we have to return. Wa ja'al al hayat ziyadatana lana fi kulli khair and make each day an increase for us in goodness. Wa ja'al al mawt rahat lana min kulli shar and make death an end to all difficulty and misery and sadness. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina. وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُّنَ O Allah, make our wives and our children the joy of our eyes, the joy of our hearts. وَجْعَلْنَا وَجْعَلْنَا نَحْنُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا 